Batman is one of the coolest superheroes. There are no two ways about it. He's dark, he's gritty, he's intense, he's fierce, he is all around awesome. And as is with anything awesome, he has had many movie incarnations. So today, I'm going through the Batman films, and I'll be deciding if they're amazing works of cinema or the worst piles of garbage ever to be called film. Hopefully, this will be fun. Let's start. <laughs> Although this may come as a surprise to some, I'm including the movie based on the 60s TV show starring Adam West here because it is a Batman movie, and it's great. Well, kind of. When watching and reviewing this movie, you have to remember that it came out in the 60s, when Batman was still finding his footing and superhero movies were not remotely as popular as they are today. Also, keep in mind that this movie is spinning off from an equally goofy Batman TV show, in which, among other things, Batman and Joker have a surfing competition. That should just give you some perspective. So look, while it is extremely dated and campy and all that stuff, it's fun to watch. Bat shark repellent silly as it is, has become a staple in pop culture. All the classic villains are there, and we get a very iconic Joker from Cesar Romero. I might be looking at this movie with nostalgia, because it was the first superhero movie I ever saw, and when I was a little kid, it was the greatest film ever made. But let's be honest here, whenever anyone talks about this movie or the TV show, who isn't looking at it with nostalgia? Most people who are Batman fans, at one point in their childhood, watch this movie. It's a good time, and as far as just sitting down and having fun with a film, I'd give it a 7.8 out of 10. It's hard to review a movie like this, but in the end, it's just a fun ride. <laughs> So then about 20 years later, DC was like, well, Superman made money while it lasted, so let's do more Batman stuff. And so they did. Under the control of Tim Burton, Batman came to be in 1989. Michael Keaton is a great Batman. He's also all around one of the most talented actors in Hollywood, and I'm so glad to see his big comeback. Another brilliant casting choice was Jack Nicholson as the Joker. He's creepy, he's insane, he's all around a great villain. That scene where he fries a guy with his hand buzzer was horrifying to me when I first saw it. This movie also took a bit of a risk that paid off, and had Batman as an already established character, something that I hope Batman v Superman does as well. Sure, there are some things that aren't perfect in this movie. As far as I can remember, one of the Joker's motivations besides, you know, being insane, was that he was in love with Vicky Vale, which was weird. Also, Batman isn't entirely comic accurate. I mean, he openly just murders people. He clocks a guy in the head on this bell and then drops him to his doom. He also grappling hooks the Joker between a building and a helicopter, and gives him the choice of either getting his leg torn off or falling to his death. But you know what? This was a really good movie, especially for its time. It has tons of iconic moments in it, like the I'm Batman scene, and the fact that Tim Burton directed it added this gothic twist to it that really worked in the movie's favor. So overall, I'm gonna give Batman 89 an 8.5 out of 10. So then, because the first Batman made lots of money, for the sequel, they let Tim Burton have a lot more creative control, which some can argue is better, and some can argue is worse. Basically, in this film, this weird disfigured baby is dumped into the sewers of Gotham, and he grows up to become the Penguin. Then, when the Penguin emerges, this guy called Max Shrek wants to make the Penguin mayor, but Batman doesn't like that, so action ensues. Also, Max Shrek just flat out murders his secretary, but she comes back with nine lives as Catwoman. And then, we have a movie. First of all, this movie is the definitive proof that Tim Burton has never read a Batman comic book. The Penguin, instead of being an evil, methodical, cigar-smoking businessman is a flat-out insane human-penguin hybrid. That being said, if you put aside the source material, this is a pretty good Batman villain. Danny DeVito is the perfect choice to play the character, and he does a great job with what he's given. He's also a really creepy villain just in general. I mean, he's just biting people's noses off left and right. Most everyone else is also great in the film. Michael Keaton returns, Christopher Walken is great, and Michelle Pfeiffer is the best Catwoman we've ever seen on screen. Another thing to note is that this is much more Tim Burton movie than it is a Batman movie, and that means that it's very weird. There's the penguin and pretty much everything associated with him. There are these weird circus goons, there's Catwoman licking Batman's face, stuff like that. In some parts, it's also really goofy just out of nowhere. Like this scene, where the Penguin is controlling the Batmobile and he gets his own little arcade Batmobile, stuff that just doesn't make any sense. The action, once again, is pretty good, and it's surprisingly a lot of fun seeing how Batman doesn't care about anyone in this movie, and he just murders bad guys. Like, he burns this guy to death with a Batmobile, he sticks a bomb down this guy's pants, it's just great. In the end, Batman Returns is a lot weirder than the first Batman, but it's still a really good movie, especially considering it came out in 1992. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. So Tim Burton then said, I'm out, and the Batman series was handed off to Joel Schumacher. Michael Keaton also didn't want anything to do with the franchise, so they got Val Kilmer. And I honestly think he makes a pretty good Bruce Wayne. Note that I didn't say Batman, because there is a difference. He plays a pretty convincing billionaire playboy. He does not play a pretty convincing, dark, frightening vigilante. In this movie, they also got Robin. And Chris O'Donnell is a pretty good Robin, except for the fact that he's pretty old to be Robin. He's certainly no boy wonder. He looks like he's about 23, which is actually what he was when this movie was made. The other performances are pretty bad. Jim Carrey as the Riddler was basically just Jim Carrey. And of 
of course, he was gonna get cast in this role because it was the 90s and he was Jim Carrey. But he was just obnoxious for most of the time. And I realized that that is Jim Carrey's thing. But for most of it, it just annoyed me. Tommy Lee Jones as Two-Face was terrible. And the thing is, Tommy Lee Jones is an amazing choice for a methodical older Two-Face. But no, he just gets half his face painted and then overacts and screams and laughs maniacally. That's also a thing to touch on, the costumes. Pretty much all of them are bad. The Riddler goes through a couple, but for the most part, he's wearing skin-tight pajamas. Two-Face, like I said, is literally just purple on one side. And of course, there are the Batman and Robin suits, famously introducing bat nipples. And look, everyone's made fun of these at some point, so I won't get into it here. But you have to think, at what point was Joel Schumacher like? You know what the bat suit is missing? Nipples. I also gotta say, this is a completely different universe than the Tim Burton films. Those were dark and gothic and kind of mature and Nightmare Before Christmas-like. Here, there are neon colors, bright spotlights, giant statues. It's so not Batman. The Batmobile is practically glow-in-the-dark. It's also a lot more cartoony and goofy than the last films. Like, those had cartoony moments, but this is a cartoon. It was made to sell toys for the most part. As far as the positives, the movie is pretty entertaining. The dialogue is so cheesy, it's so ridiculous, there are just really weird out-of-place moments like Robin's laundry montage. You will be entertained. Are you not entertained? It doesn't hit the so bad it's good feeling that Batman and Robin does, but if you sit down and just laugh at how dumb it is, it's survivable. So all in all, this is a pretty bad movie. I was surprised to find out that quite a lot of people like it, but it was just not good in my opinion. It was the beginning of the end for Batman, and I'll give it a 4 out of 10. <laughs> So here we finally are, at the legendary Batman and Robin. This movie is great. Terrible, but great. I need to explain something here real quick. There are two ways to judge a movie, whether it's a good movie and whether it's entertaining. This is a horrible movie, but it's really entertaining. I'll get to that a bit later. First up, what are the bad things about this movie? You know, besides all of it. I mean, we can just start from the first scene of the film. It's the weirdest close-up suit-up montage, and then the cheesiest lines of dialogue. I actually went back and checked. The first line of the movie is Robin saying, I want a car. Chicks dig the car. Literally, the first line. We see the Batmobile, which once again is basically a disco rave on wheels, and then the movie really starts. And by really starts, I mean you begin to realize how bad this film really is. I just want to say, pretty much everything Batman has is bad. The bat suit is terrible again, Batman pretty much can't move, his vehicles are terrible, his Batman voice is literally just his normal voice. Listen to this. I freeze. I'm Batman. There are cartoon sound effects left and right, Batman has a bat credit card, and the puns. Oh my god, the puns. Sure, the first couple one-liners were amusing, but then they just got annoying. I usually don't do this, but I actively rolled my eyes every time Mr. Freeze said pretty much anything. And on that note, the cast in this movie is pretty terrible. Actually, correction, the cast in this movie is amazing. Tons of A-list actors that have been amazing in other things. They all just give such bad performances. You've got Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, who overacts so much she makes the Riddler look like Matthew McConaughey in Interstellar. Then you've got Anud as Mr. Freeze, and I didn't actually check, but I'm pretty sure that at least 80% of all his lines are terrible puns. Chris O'Donnell as Robin is a little brat in the movie, but maybe that's what he was supposed to be, so forgiven, I guess. Alicia Silverstone was miscast, but worst of all is George Clooney. I'm pretty sure George Clooney came on set the first day and was like, this movie is gonna be the worst. So he played his part like he really didn't want to be there, and so he was able to escape with some of his dignity. Also, there's this whole Alfred dying subplot, and Alfred is conveniently dying of the same thing as Mr. Freeze's wife and whatever, but ultimately, you just don't care, and it wastes time. I also want to say, the laws of physics are literally non-existent in this film. There's just no tension, because every character can practically fly or float through the air when needed. So in the end, I'm gonna do a bit of a cop-out here, and rate this movie two different ways. As a film, and as something I can be entertained by. As a film, acting, sets, dialogue, characters, all that stuff, it gets a 2 out of 10. But as something that I can watch, laugh at, and enjoy, just by how horrible it is, it gets an 8 out of 10. It's the only way I could think to rate this thing. So because of the colossal failure of Batman and Robin, DC cast Batman aside for 8 years until they decided to completely reimagine the character. Make him dark and serious, like Batman should be. And after a Batman movie that was pretty bad, and a Batman movie that was god-awful, DC couldn't afford to have a new reboot of the character be bad. So they got an amazing director, an amazing cast, an amazing script, and they hoped for the best. And what they got was the best. Batman Begins is such a great film. I'm not gonna spend too much time talking about it, because there are just too many good things to say about it. I've always wondered why Batman Begins has never gotten the same attention and love as The Dark Knight. Sure, people really like it, but I'd consider them almost equal in terms of quality. I'm not sure where to start here. Firstly, the performances. Christian Bale is the best Batman and Bruce Wayne. I've said it before, he plays three characters in this movie. The Batman persona, the vigilante that terrifies criminals, Bruce Wayne's actual persona, a dark, disturbed, brilliant guy out to protect his city, and Bruce Wayne's false persona, a carefree billionaire playboy, a persona that he has to put on to make sure no one realizes that he's Batman. Everyone else is great too, and of course you're gonna get amazing performances when you have a cast like this. Katie Holmes, Michael Caine, Gary Oldman, Morgan Freeman, Ken Watanabe, Tom Wilkinson, 
Neeson, and that annoying kid from Game of Thrones. Everyone plays their characters so well, but I have to give a special mention to Liam Neeson as Ross al Ghul and Cillian Murphy as Scarecrow. Liam Neeson is one of my favorites, despite his, let's just say, poor decisions in films recently, and he pulls off the plot twist that he's actually Ross al Ghul perfectly. Cillian Murphy also plays it psychologically terrifying, intelligent in that crazy way, and all around he's an awesome villain. Other things to like about this movie. The action is spectacular. The training montage, the one-on-one -on -one between Ross al Ghul and Batman, all of it is great, even though Batman totally murdered everyone in that ninja hideout. Hans Zimmer's score is iconic and fits in with the dark tone. All of the costumes, Batman and Scarecrow especially, they feel grounded and realistic and serve their purpose. I could go on for longer, but I got two other movies to talk about, so I'm gonna wrap it up. Batman Begins is one of the best superhero movies, and I'm honestly gonna give it a 10 out of 10. So people liked the first Batman movie, so Christopher Nolan went ahead and made a second one. And he basically did everything as great in this movie as he did in the last. The acting and the characters are spot on again. They recast Katie Holmes with Maggie Gyllenhaal, and normally recasting isn't good at all, but here it actually worked. There was also the addition of Aaron Eckhart as Two-Face, which was great, and finally the character was done justice. He was interesting, and obviously very conflicted. Of course, the standout performance is Heath Ledger as the Joker. I've already said what I think of his brilliant performance in other videos, and so I'll just keep it brief. His portrayal transcended just a crazy guy in some makeup with a knife. He was crazy, but he was cunning and mysterious, and his performance is, in my opinion, the best performance in any superhero film ever. He definitely earned that Oscar, and it's a huge shame that he passed away. Everything else about this movie is incredible. I'll say that it's one of the most intense comic book films ever. Everything is so interesting. There's not a single scene in the film where you're not glued to the screen. The interrogation scene is just two guys talking, and it's one of the most engaging scenes of the film. The opening scene is one of the best in all of movie history, as you see all these clowns kill each other until only the Joker is left, and he delivers this classic line. I believe... Whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. I most likely will make a review for The Dark Knight at some point because I definitely can't do it justice in this video. If you haven't seen it, go out, find it, and watch it. This film also gets a 10 out of 10. So Christopher Nolan then had to cap off what had so far been one of the best superhero movie series of all time. And is The Dark Knight Rises as great as Batman Begins or The Dark Knight? The short answer, no, but it's still pretty great. The long answer, well, here we go. So most people really love this movie, which honestly kind of surprised me. Of course, The Dark Knight Rises gets an A+. Because The Dark Knight Rises is... Awesome tacular. Five out of five there schmoes. It, I d it deserves it, and it's my favorite movie of the year so far. I really enjoyed it, but I don't think it's as good as everyone else says. What was great about it? Well, first off, Ben was an awesome villain. He's intimidating, he's methodical, he's hard to understand. Where well, the truth about despair? Whatever, he was great. And Hathaway, she was pretty good as Catwoman. I have to say, Alfred kind of wasn't as great as he was in the other films, but maybe that's just me. There are also a lot of great moments in this, specifically Bane breaking Batman's back. That moment was awesome, and also very reminiscent of the comic version. The action in this movie, while there isn't, you know, a ton of it, is really well done. The Bane Batman showdown and the epic final battle are excellent. The movie also continues to have a great dark gritty tone for Batman, while also finding moments to add in humor to break it up a bit. Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a welcome new addition. He plays this cop, and then it turns out he's gonna be Robin or Nightwing. I thought that was a little bit, I don't know, out of place. But anyway, for the most part, Joseph Gordon-Levitt was pretty good in this. So now for my negatives. And fair warning, I'm just gonna get into spoilers at this point. Firstly, I didn't really like the ending, and I do realize that I'm gonna get flack for this, because immediately when you say you didn't like the ending of a Nolan film, especially when you're a guy of my age, people just say, oh, you didn't get it. And maybe that's true, maybe I didn't get it, but that's not the main reason I didn't like it. So Batman has to get rid of this nuke, so he gets in his plane, and then he either goes out with a bomb and it blows up, or Batman got in his plane, flew for a little bit, then put it to autopilot, and jumped out and somehow survived the nuclear blast. Then Alfred either goes to Italy and sees Bruce Wayne and Selina Carroll there, or he dreams of seeing Bruce and Selina. Either way, it's kind of anticlimactic. Maybe I didn't understand it, but it just didn't do it for me. And my main complaint is that I feel like this movie is kind of poorly paced. You've got a lot of time at the beginning, setting up the characters with Batman just kind of stumbling around with his beard, then he fights Bane, gets crippled, and spends most of the movie in this pit. And I think there might have been a little bit too much time spent in the prison hole thing. Maybe if they cut it down a bit, it would have felt more smooth. It just felt kind of uneven for me. So overall, I enjoyed the movie, but it didn't live up to all of my expectations. However, before I rate this, I have to say, I saw this film about two years ago, and I haven't seen it fully since. So I think there might be a chance that if I watched it now, I'd appreciate it on a whole different level 
level and the score would increase. However, at the time of this recording, my opinion is that this is an 8.5 out of 10 movie. I can definitely understand why a lot of people love this. Once I watch it again, I'll probably make a whole video about it. So those are my thoughts on all of the Batman movies. Which is your favorite and least favorite? Or rank the movies from best to worst in the comments. For me, the best is definitely The Dark Knight, although Batman Begins isn't too far behind. And the worst is Batman and Robin, even though Batman Forever isn't too far behind. Anyway, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos like the one you just watched. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.